Welcome to Bandit's Keep Actual Play. I'm Daniel. Today we are continuing my original Dungeons & Dragons solo campaign. The wolves are... <laughs> they're at a tight spot here. They went into the dungeon. They had a little bit of trouble with the residents, we'll say. And uh, they're about to dive back in. All right, so they're going to have to really think about what they want to do here. Because basically, they've come through, come into this room... And they know the cockatrice are there. They know there's two more of them. There's likely treasure in that space. And this is what they came for. They start thinking to themselves, is this, is this a good idea? Or do we... Knowing that they lost a missile weapon, I think the party might leave the dungeon and get the other character that's up top that has a bow, which is the elf. I think that the elf would be much more useful than, let's say, one of these extra magic users because they've got that uh, ability. So they're going to make that chance. Now, again, they're risking something because if there's an attack up top, that could be a problem. But... The party's going to leave the dungeon, and they're going to swap out a character. Okay, this elf is going to come in, replacing... They definitely want that sleep spell. What does the elf have for a spell? The elf has... Whole, uh, protection from evil. So we need to make sure at least one of the guys has a... Yep, one, one person has a... Okay, no... So the so this guy can't leave. It's got to be him. All right. Okay. So we do this. That gives us another missile weapon because they realize that they are just not going to be able to make this happen if they don't have the missile fire to protect them. The elf, of course, is using a longbow, I believe. Yeah, which is nice. And they're going to, <laughs> I guess, make another make make another run at this. What what they're hoping is that, you know, I don't even think the elf can. Oh, they can if they're in short range. Okay, so it is possible for them if they can get... Oh, I didn't add the range for the... Oh, they didn't use crossbows. Okay. <laughs> I'm talking to myself and I figured it out. I did the math right. Okay, so what they need to do is just get lucky and either get a sleep spell off on these things or they're going to need to uh, be able to get them at range with the bows. So they're going to go right back in and we'll start over. I'm pulling away one of the lantern chips. They're just going to keep the lantern for now because I think they want to stay as low key as possible. Now at OD and D, I should have done this on the way back, but they weren't being chased. Doors, doors lock behind you, so they got to try to open the door again, or close behind you, I should say. Okay, they're able to open it. Okay, so they know their way, so they're going to be able to move a little bit faster because they're not exploring. So I'm going to let them come all the ways to this corner in one turn, just because they. They know where they're going. And what they're going to do is the elf, who is, you know, elves are sneaky and all that, and they're also the magic user, they're going to have their sleep spell ready, and they're going to come to the corner here. they got the bow in the hand as well. They're going to look down and see if the two cockatrice is still there. If those two cockatrice are there, then basically, you know, of course, they don't even know the sleep spell is going to work on the cockatrice. I'm, I'm not even sure either, and I will check when they cast it. If those two cockatrice are there, and the elf can surprise them, then they're going to try to cast the sleep spell. So, number one, let's roll yes or no, are they there? In fact, they could have been anywhere, right? So I should say this. They're you know, they, so they wouldn't be able to move twice as fast because they're going to take their time. They're going to come to this corner and look. Are the cockatrice there? No. I'm just going to treat a... Well, I'll roll again. <laughs> Keep getting ties. Yes. Okay. So there's some way here. I'm going to roll a d6 to see how close they are. Two. Okay, they're very close. So they're here. I mean, the party's looking for them, so the question is, are the cockatrice surprised? I would say very unlikely, so I'm only going to say a one in six they'll be surprised, because we got a light source and everything else going on. They're not. All right. So they come to the corner, they see the cockatrice, who immediately look at the characters, and, you know, they killed one of their friends, they, 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 the cockatrice friends, I should say. So I think they're just going to be hostile. I'm not going to bother rolling reaction or anything, just like I did in the first time, because they were invading their lair. And we're just simply going to go into initiative, and the party's going to hope they can win again and back up and do their... Oh, no, they didn't win. Okay, the cockatrice closed with them. Oh, but what I do have here, which might actually work to my advantage, is that I have a spear that can attack from the second rank. So I actually have four attacks against the cockatrice. If I get real lucky, I might be able to kill one. But for now, let's just roll the cockatrice attack first. There's two of them. Again, sixes are kills. Oh, no. 
Okay, well, whew, I guess that was more than a low level party should take. So, who is turned to stone is the question. I'm just going to roll both dice. Uh, second character and last character. So, you and the cleric, unfortunately. Okay, at this point, I think the, the party is not very... Now again, it's simultaneous, so they're going to get to attack. There is a chance here that... So let's just figure this all out. The, the cleric... The cleric and the magic user do not get a bonus to their dice. The two fighters do. So I'm going to roll all four dice here. They, they Everybody gets one attack, basically. And they're all heavy foot. So basically, they need a five or a six to kill... They, two of the dice, the two that are the fighters, will get a plus, plus one. So the two uh, white dice. No. Two kills, which isn't enough. They do not take out a cockatrice, and two of them get turned to stone. All right. This is bad. I don't know that they're actually even capable of defeating the cockatrice at this point. So they're going to run. If they can. Initiative. Ooh, tie. Okay, a little good. Couldn't have rolled that when I was dagging. All right, cockatrice is going to go first, which again it works well for the party because the party is not uh, the cockatrice aren't going to run right. They're basically going to stay with the party, so they'll they will go first, if you will, and then the party will just run. Now they're going to run to this door. And we did just open it two rounds ago, so I will say it's open. And the question is, and that's the end of that round, but the question is, will the cockatrice follow? They've taken out now more people. Let's see. Yes or no, do they follow? They do not. Okay. So the party's back in this room. There's only four of them remaining. There's two more back at the camp, but they really are in trouble here. They can't seem to get these cockatrice, and they don't have... I don't think the weapons to do it. So I actually think that they are out of luck. Like they basically don't even have enough firepower. They've got the elf with the longbow. Yeah, I don't think they can kill the cockatrice. I actually thought they were going to have a chance here because there were so many of them, but unfortunately they have lost a big chunk of their people. They don't want to risk losing their horses, so they can't take their guards off from above, right? So, really, they have to decide. We'll say they close that door behind them. Should they just go through a different door and see if they can get some treasure and then get the hell out of here because basically they're, they're not in a good way? And I think the answer to that is yes. I think they're here. They've traveled multiple days to get here. They have lost companions. To go home empty-handed at this point would be very bad. So at this point, the party is going to say, there's only four of us. Let's see what's in through one of these other doors. Let's hope for the best. So at this door, they're going to listen. They have uh, two humans and an elf. So again, the elf hears on a one or two. Okay, they don't hear anything. Can they open the door? There's three of them. They do open it. Let's see what's on the other side. So that whatever's there could be a surprise. Okay, that's not possible. I guess this is the way it would go. I guess technically it would go like that because it could be another room in between. Let's just do it this way. Okay. All right. So they open this up. They look down. They don't see anything. Now the turn's gone by. Rolling for a random monster. Nothing. They move to the corner because they can do two moves, right? They see there's two, two doors they can look into here. I think they're going to go here because that will also allow them to see what's there. They're going to go there and they're going to listen at the door. So I'll flip this card first because they can see what's there. Okay, another door. What we'll do is if things... I should have done this before. If things intersect in a weird way, I'll just add a secret door. Okay, so 
They see a door there. They see a door there. They're going to listen at it, of course. <laughs> Three ones. Okay, whatever's there, if, if there's anything there, they're going to hear it. I'm going to roll a d6 to see what's in the room. Four is empty. Well, no monster, I should say. Now, in an empty room, there is treasure in it on a rollable one. No. Okay. So they don't hear anything. They force the door open, and there's an empty room, basically. Oh, actually, that wouldn't have taken a full turn. So because they still have more time in the turn, they're going to come this way, and they're going to listen at this door, to which they hear nothing. So they're going to try to open it, and this will be the end of that turn, which they do. And let's see what's in this room. Monster. I'll deal for it. One, in, one through three, it has treasure as well. Yeah, it has treasure too. Monster and treasure. Let's roll. Six. Animal. Okay. So, again, some kind of giant animal here. Let's see what kind it is. That's interesting. Maybe they'll walk away with some treasure. Of course, animals have the terrible treasure, but you know what? Treasure's treasure at this point. <laughs> oh, man. Bummer. Six. Weasel. Okay, so this is a giant weasel. I'll do the same thing as before. It'll have up to three hit die. All right, so it has one hit die. Okay, so they see a giant weasel in the room. Let's check its reaction. Uh, it's kind of curious. I think they're just going to try to try, they're going to try to intimidate it. Like they're just going to like, they'll take their time, right? And they're going to light up a torch and just like toss it in this direction, see if they can run the thing off. Actually, no, they're not. They're not taking any risk. The elf's just going to plug it with a longbow. I hate to do that because, you know, <laughs> he doesn't want to just kill a weasel. But at the same time, the weasel's light foot again. So he hits on a four through six. Uh, they get a plus one because of the range. So if I get three through six, he kills giant weasel. Two, he doesn't. He misses. All right, shoots at the giant weasel, which, of course, makes it mad. And now we're going to go into straight initiative. This party has bad luck. All right, simultaneous. So, I mean, it's a weasel. They're just going to, the two fighters. Oh, God, there's only one fighter. The one fighter is going to step in the doorway and block the weasel's path because it just figures it's got to, right? So it's weasel versus fighter. I mean, the way this is going to work is that the weasel can't hit the fighter because it's... Uh, it's not enough hit dice to go through his armor. And the fighter can hit it pretty easily. So it could be one or two rounds of combat. But in the end, the fighter's going to win. So I'm just not going to bother doing it. They kill the giant weasel. And they come into the room and there's some treasure in here. All right. Let's hope that it's something decent. Now that's a round of combat. So I'm going to switch to uh, the next turn. And I'm also going to roll for a wandering monster on a one or two. And there's not one. Okay. So they can look in here for the treasure. So with animals... They're going to have a D6 times 1,000 and a D12 times 200 for the gold. So let's see. The, the, I'm sorry, the, the, the silver. So that's 4,000 silver pieces, which is actually all of it. And a D12 times 200 for the gold. Eight times two is 16. So that's 1,600 gold pieces. And... 4,000 silver. Ooh. Hmm. There's only four of them. None of them are super encumbered. Okay. So the three magic users are barely at 200 encumbrance. So they can actually each hold over 2,000 a piece. So 2,000, 2,000, 15. Okay. So they can carry all this treasure, but they're basically weighed down at this point. Like they're basically full. And uh, they're moving now at six inches. So honestly, it makes sense for them just to leave at this point and put it up at the camp. And maybe they'll go back in with the full party tomorrow if they want to risk it. And we'll roll for that. So let's get them out of the dungeon. If we can, they know where they're going. Um, so I'm going to allow them to move faster than normal. So I'm going to say that they can get out in one turn, but I will make... No, it's not a wandering monster turn. So they actually can get out in one turn. And that's where they're at for right the second. They come to the top with all their treasure, 
and unfortunately they tell their other friends that more have perished in the dungeon. At the beginning, I think I said it was May 22nd, but it's actually May 28th, and we're coming into the night, right? They arrived on the 20th, or they go into the dungeon on the 28th, and basically they're beat, right? This is our group here. We're going to do a couple of things here. Number one, they're in the woods. They're back at camp. They have some treasure, right? They've got 4,000 silver pieces. They've got 1,600 gold pieces. That's not a lot. <laughs> they don't have the thing they came for, but they did lose a huge amount of their people. They could go back. It didn't take them that long to get here. They've got the horses. They could recruit more people and come back. Clearly, a bunch of magic users maybe isn't the right way to go here. But I also don't know if they know, right? Because we talked about this, or I started talking about it, if the sleep spell would even work on the cockatrice. Because like I said, I didn't even look it up. So there's two more magic users back in camp. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this and evaluate a couple things. Number one, I'm going to say, is there an encounter at the camp that night? If when the party gets together and they've got all their horses there and they're talking about this, if they encounter something in the wilderness and they have to move off the hex, if they have to evade, they're probably just going to go home and rebuild, right? If not, they might go back in depending on whether or not they know something about the cockatrices. So let's do this in steps. I'm going to go uh, back to the wilderness book. And when you are in the woods, which is where they are, well, it's where the dungeon is, basically... On a roll of a 5 or 6, on a d6, there's an encounter. So if this does not come up 5, 6, we'll move forward. If it does come up 5, 6, we'll figure it out. 6. Okay. They come back out of the dungeon, telling their friends that they, you know, that they lost more people in the dungeon. What should we do? They're packing the gold up in the saddlebags, talking about it, when suddenly they are encountered. You know, something happens. So what we're going to do is we're going to come to the book just like we do when we're doing the travel across land. And we're going to see what they've encountered. Now, of course, they're set up. They have an encampment. They're probably going to be on alert. They're also probably had, you know, they, they hid where they are. So I'm going to say they are, are not going to be able to be surprised by this. They've got guards. What I will say, though, is that whatever's coming might be surprised. So... Let's see what it is first, and we'll determine whether or not that thing seems like it could be surprised by a group of, of, of adventurers. So, we're in the woods. We're going to roll a d8. Four. I believe that's lycanthropes. Okay. Lycanthropes. We've got some lycanthropes in the woods. And we're going to see what kind they are. Okay, one. All right, they're werewolves. So we've got werewolves in the woods. What I want to do now is determine whether or not this is their lair. Like, are they from this area? If they are, then I'm going to say they know the area well enough that they will not be able to be surprised. So, 15% chance this is their lair. Or it's near this area. 74, it's not. So they're traveling through, so there is a chance. So surprise is on one or a two. Two. Okay. Surprise means they basically don't see the party. Party ducks, we don't have to move. We can basically automatically evade them. That's good. So that's question number one. Question number two is, will the party decide to delve one more time? They feel like the cockatrice, as they stand, are too tough. They know they're going to need more people with like some heavy crossbows or pole arms or some, some kind of way to set it up so the cockatrice cannot get to them. Possibly setting up some kind of barrier. I mean, there's all different things they could do that they're not prepared to do right now because they're a small force. They didn't plan for it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do two things. First, I'm going to determine if any of the magic users actually know whether or not the sleep spell will work. And then I'll look up to see if it does. So let's take a look at our magic users. He's got a 13 intelligence. Okay, that's not bad. That's above average. 13 intelligence. Again, above average which I'm basically going to treat as average in this case. 12, average. So I'm not giving them any kind of benefit at this point. <laughs> 10, <laughs> no. Come on, nice. Maybe she's got all the smarts. 14, okay. Nobody has the 15 that you need to get the bonus on the experience points. You know, the full bonus. So I'm not going to give them any advantage here. I'm just going to say they know their spells pretty well. 
there's a 50-50 chance, or however you want to think about it, that they will know. White dye means that they do know if the spell would work or think they, it'll work. Uh, black means they don't know. So if I roll black, they don't know. Okay, white. So they do know whether or not the spell will work. So let's look it up. Let's see if it works. So the sleeve spell, let's do two things. We're going to look up cockatrice because I know it's based on hit dice. And when we look up the cockatrice in the book, they are five hit die. I am about 99% sure that you cannot put to sleep a five hit die creature with the sleep spell. So possibly this comes to them where they're thinking about it and they're like, well, we can all go in armor with sleep spell. And then somebody's like, hold on a second. Yeah, four plus one is the most. So they realize that the cockatrice is likely going to be immune to it. I guess they don't know for sure, but their gut says it's immune to it. So they know it's not worth going after the cockatrice net right now. They're going to need some other kind of reinforcement for that. But do they want to explore the other door? I mean, there's not a whole lot of treasure they've recovered, but, you know, they're fairly bold and they were successful in their first adventure. They're probably not going to want to not be successful again. So I think that there's a chance they'll explore at least that other direction. So I'm going to say that we're going to, we're going to do two things. I'm going to make a morale check. So a standard morale is seven. So if they make the morale check, then there's going to be a better than, than better odds that they'll explore. If they fail the morale check, then there's a worse odd that they'll explore. Okay, they failed the morale check. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to roll. These two dice mean they go home. This die means they stay and explore this other passage. You know, whichever one, the highest die is what we go by. Oh, interesting. Okay. We've got a split here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to re-roll just with two dice. Again, black means they explore, white means they go home. Okay, they're going home. After seeing those werewolves, after losing their friends, having some cash so they know they can buy what they think they need, they're going to form a plan. You know, the they can do things. like They know what the, the layout is here. They know the cockatrice are down here. They know there's a, a point. If they were to slide a barrier, let's say a spiked barrier across here. And they, of course, they don't know about that secret door, but unlikely cockatrice are going to go through a secret door. If they slide that spiked barrier across, like with, with the cockatrice can't penetrate it, they can fire arrows through it and they might be able to take them out that way. So they think they can do it. I don't think they have the resources to do that here. And also they only have one person with a heavy crossbow and one person with a longbow, and that's not really what they're going to want. They're going to want multiple heavy crossbows so they can just hammer down there. So, sadly, they're gonna go home. And let's get them back out on the outdoor survival map. Okay, so on the morning of the 29th, they've made their decision. They're heading back, having lost multiple party members. I believe there are six of them left. And they, they're they gonna take all the horses, obviously. <laughs> so the party size is still nine. They are on light horses. Again, they're not exploring, so they're gonna be able to have a 10 hex, kind of in the plains, if you will, movement. And what we're going to do is we're going to roll just like we do before on outdoor survival to get them home. Their home is somewhere up here. All right, day one. So the way I'm doing this is, just in case this is the first time you've seen this, uh, white dye is whether or not they get lost. Black dye is going to be whether or not there's an encounter. So we roll. By the way, they pretty much used exactly seven days rations at this point and they came with three with three weeks so they basically have uh, two weeks rations okay so the white in the woods means they are not lost because a one or a two means lost we'll deal with the encounter later that's a five maybe that's an encounter it depends on where they end up so we're trying to get up there so let's take a look at our map again we, we can move 10 hexes which is really good all right so we want to get home as quickly as possible. Being in the woods costs two to move. So no matter where we go, it's going to cost us two. So one, two, three, four, five, six. On a path, it only costs one. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so we're there at ten. Ten is a river. We're going to check our encounter, and of course on a river, if there's an encounter on a five or a six, fantastic. Okay, so there's an encounter. We're gonna roll on the river 
and see what it might be. So it's a D8 to see what kind of creature it is. Six. Six is a swimmer. Well, that makes sense. Okay, so it's some kind of swimmer. The good thing about the swimmer is that because it's a swimmer, if they do have to move off the the riverbank, they will they can't be chased. Well, I guess that's not true because some of these things look like they go on the land. Okay, so let's roll a d12 to see what kind of swimmer it is. Nine. All right, so nine. Move this up so you guys can see it. Oh, mermen. Okay, mermen. Interesting. So we've got some mermen there on the river. And what we're going to do now is we're going to see how many there are, and we're going to figure out evasion and all that if need be. So let's take a look. I don't want to close that. Let's take a look at men, uh, Monster and Treasure. Mermen are similar to Berserkers in most respects, but they fight at minus one on land. They are armed with tridents and darts. Armor class equal to leather. Okay, so if we have to encounter them, that's what we'll deal with. But first of all, let's just see what the deal is. There are mermen here. Is this their residence? Is this their uh, their lair, as it would be? There's a 15% chance of that. 53. No. So they're passing through. How many are there? So for men, you've got 30 to 300, which is basically a uh, D10 times 30. Five. Okay, that's not great. It's better. Higher is better here. So five times... 30 is 150. So we got 150 more men. Oh, and before we, so they're, they're traveling along. Do we surprise them or do they surprise us? We are the white die, they are the black. Okay, we surprise them. So <laughs> that helps a lot. So we surprise them because we rolled one. And I suppose I said that funny. I meant if we surprise them, we're the one. Maybe that was confusing. Let me roll again so it's clear. If I This die is basically, if we surprise them, this die is if they surprise us. Okay, same thing happens. We surprise them. So when you surprise a group like this, you automatically evade. So we're basically good to go. It's like nothing happened. That's good. It's not their lair, so we don't need to make a mark, but one day has gone by. Let's move on to the next day. So we started on the 29th. I know that. Okay. All right, day two. Again, white die is uh, get lost, black die is encounter. All right, we got, we're not lost because we're only lost on the river on a uh, one. So we're trying to get up there. The simplest way to do that, I think, is going to be to take this mountain pass. This is how we went last time. Now, for some reason, mountain passes count as two, but that's fine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We can enter there, nine, ten. We're on a path in the woods. So again, it's the woods. We're going to check for an encounter. I believe in the woods on a five or a six, and we rolled a four, so I don't think this is an encounter, but we'll check it. Woods, encounter on five or six, no encounter. Okay, another day has gone by. Another ration. Next day. Ah, all right, five and four. In the woods, we're lost on a one or a two, and we'll deal with the encounter in a second. I think that we'll probably be in the woods still, but we'll see. One, two, three. Now, this is an interesting one because this is only one move, but then the mountains are tough, right? So I think we're just going to go straight through the woods. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10. Oh, I didn't even know that was going to work. Okay, so we actually end up in the plains. That's perfect, actually. So we end up in the plains. We check our encounter, which is four in the plain, or, yeah, the clear, I should say. There's no encounter. Another day has gone by. I don't need to rest yet. Horses make a big difference. <laughs> okay, so four in the clear. We're not lost. Six, there is an encounter, but we might actually be off the page because we have 10 movement. All we have to do is go off the middle. One... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, we're off. Okay, so there's no encounter because we're not on the board anymore. All right, doesn't take us a full day to get home. But that is another day that goes by, so that's four days. So that would make it... We left on the 29th. 
and we arrive back home on the 2nd of June. Now, normally, I give them a month before they can adventure again. But, and I think I will do that. I was going to say I might not do that this time because they have a plan, but they're going to need to recoup their losses. They can't just stock up on stuff and go back because, unfortunately, <laughs> as much as I hate to say it, a big chunk of the party is not that useful, at least against the cockatrice, because they're all first level magic users. They're just not that. They'll be useful for carrying stuff, and we'll look at some of their other spells maybe as a possibility. But basically, they're not. What we need right now is fighters. So they're going to recruit some fighters. We're just going to have to spend some money probably. They're going to obviously give their patron the, the, their share of the money. They're going to uh, prepare themselves and we'll probably send them out. I might not hold them fast to a month, but I think I'll probably be pretty close to that. So it'll be the beginning of July before the wolves go back, but they've got a plan now. Thanks for watching. If you've been enjoying these solo actual plays, please do like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, all the good YouTube stuff. Also, Check the description below, you'll find links to all the different games I'm using and tools to produce the actual play, as well as a link to my Discord server and my Patreon if you'd like to support the channel. I'll talk to you soon.